That's the first time I'd ever seen Michael Van Gerwen out. He's never been out. I've never seen him out for a night out, and he came out with us. And I thought, fair, but yeah, he's not shy. He's not bar shy either. <laughs> Is he yeah, not? <laughs> If you had to pick three of the current, start, let's, let's say the top 32, you have to pick three of them to go on a night out with, who are you picking and why? Well, just one or three. You want to, I want three names. Three. I want so three. Johnny Clayton, fellow yep. Welsh boy, and, he, and he's a good dancer and he can swig a bit so we can go in rounds. <laughs> he's a good dancer, is he? Well, he thinks he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chizzy, 100%. He knows, he knows how to party. I wouldn't have thought that from Chizzy. <laughs> oh, he, he he can he can party. He's a good lad. So yeah, Joe Cullen, Chizzy, and well, that's your three: Joe Cullen, Chizzy, and um. Oh, not, Joe, not Joe Cullen. Well, yeah, I put Joe in there as well because he comes out with he he's he's with Johnny all the time, and yeah, I was out with Joe in Liverpool actually. So what you went out on the town? Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's the first time I'd ever seen Michael Van Gerwen out. He's never been out. I've never seen him out for a night out. And he came out with us, and I thought, fair, but yeah, he's not shy. He's not bar shy either. <laughs> Is he not? Oh. I think he racked up a bill, like, fair play to him. <laughs> wow. I'd have paid so much money to be on that night out. Is that yeah. weird to, like, be on the stage and be going, like, head to head and then no, but that's what go for a pint after? That's what people don't realise. Like, you're, up, you're on stage to, to do a job and off stage, a lot of us get on really well and we go out, you know, especially on Pro Tours, you know, in, in Barnsley and Wigan and places like that. You can't just sit in your hotel room all the time, so you you you, you tend to go out with with the players, even if you, you know, if you're playing cards down you know down by the bar, or if you go out for a night out, then you know we don't need to do a job, but we still get on off it. Some of us. I'm I'm so fascinated by this darts night out. So it's you, Clayton. Yes, yeah, so it was Cullen. Me. Yeah, it was me, Johnny Clayton, <laughs> Michael. It was Joe Cullen, Joe Cullen's wife, Joe Cullen's sister. <coughs> It was it was about it was a good eight nine ten of us. It was. Uh, good night. Oh, I love it. My mate Joel's going to be so giddy hearing my this. My missus, my missus rings me the day after. What did you spend hundred and thirty quid on on one round? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Jaeger bombs. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the biggest drinker out of them? Out of them lot. Drinker, I don't. Who puts them away? Who, who could down a pint the quickest? Sorry, I'm still hung up on this night <sighs> out. <laughs> I don't know. Probably you for the rugby days. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not a big swig. I I can have a couple of pints and I'm done. But what's your drink of choice? I like a vodka lemonade. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, or I, I like uh, I like to have a mojito. If if like I would have never oh, thought yeah. that, Mister Price. Yes. <laughs> this gives me heartburn though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to have See? a nice gavas. What kind of gavas gone like? It's in doing your hard man imagery. You got a mojito. <laughs> <laughs> mojito and gavas gone. <laughs> Where you on the dance floor then? I was there, but I wasn't dancing. Right. You I didn't just pop, pop out the Uncle Cracker or whatever no. it is. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he was just naked going up and down the dance floor. Uh, <laughs> what was Michael Van Gogh like? Is he like you were saying he's he's a he's a good laugh on a night out, is yeah, he? Yeah, well, that's the first time he, I've ever had a night out with him because obviously he's perfect we're we're all professional, but he obviously with with it with his um stature and or being world number one, sometimes if he go, was to go out, you could you can imagine what people are like with him. So just get swarmed. Yeah, it was nice to actually see him out, and I hope he comes out more. I, I don't have to put my hand in my pocket so much. <laughs> no, honestly, he's, he's a great guy, and every time you go to a bar, and he's like, no, no, I get that, I get that. Oh. So I was like sneaking to the bar to get some drinks, like because fair play, he's got out of gold, and he's he's a nice he's a nice kid. Oh, I love to hear that. Our friend Robbie Knox, he's our third co-host that sometimes comes on. He he has a bit of a thing where he asks people about their bin day rituals, very mundane. But he interviewed Michael Van Gogh, and they were talking about the Dutch bin day. And then uh, I knew then that Michael Van Gogh was probably all right if he's willing to waste his time sitting there talking about <laughs> talking about bin days. No, that's um that's quality. Can I can I come next time? <laughs> Definitely, 100%. <laughs> Do you get, uh, you must get spotted a lot on a night out then. Yeah, well, obviously, w when we went out and you go to the first bar and then a lot of people want want to have a picture with you and stuff and then my mate John who comes, he's like, oh, should we go to another bar? And I'm like, no, we've settled you now. They've all had their picture. We go to another bar and it's just going to happen again. So yeah. we'll just stay here. I don't, I don't mind doing it. I know it's part and parcel of it, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's... Um, it was a good night out, and we had a couple of pictures, which which you expect, and then we had a couple of beers as well. Love it because of the perception of Gerwin Price, um, especially in England, and we talked about it, the booze and that. Do you actually do, is that, does anyone actually say that shit to your face or not? No, I mean like if even now, like every Premier League, 
you know, sometimes after the Thursday night, you go down to the bar in the hotel and, and, and have a beer, you know, just chill out. And then you meet some of the fans who are actually staying in the hotel and, and they speak to me. They're like, oh, you're like nothing at all what we thought you were going to be like. Because, mm. uh, you know, maybe one or two of the daughters, you know, they, they might be stuck up. They might not speak to someone, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll sit there, talk to people and they're like, you're total opposite to what I thought you was. But, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm on stage. I'm trying to do to do a job and just trying to earn money. And yeah, it's not to everybody's taste the way I am, but I'd like them just to come and speak to me off the stage or meet me in a bar or whatever, and, mm. and, and then and then have a have their opinion. Yeah, you are a lovely guy. Met you twice. You're a very lovely guy. So yeah, I'll forever be a going prize fan now. Good. That's that's all it I've takes. Cha I've changed someone. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want a name here because we're not going to do this. And I know you're a professional, but are there players in the game that you really do not like? You haven't got to give me a name. No, on, and on art, hundred percent. There's nobody in the game that. That I, that I dislike. Obviously, there's players I dislike on stage sometimes, mm -hmm. but off stage, I know what it's like where I'm disliked on stage and I'm different off. So I don't judge anybody by the the way they are on stage and I, I don't dislike anybody. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. The, sta the stage persona thing feels quite strange because the, the audience watching you, <coughs> like you get this whole um, pantomime villain thing, but they're just watching you play darts. You're not talking to them much or anything. But like my my kind of, I've seen how they've reacted to you when I was researching for this, but then I also watched a documentary on you that the PDC put up and you just seem lovely throughout the whole thing. You're exactly as you are now. Yeah. Hmm. So it just feels like if those people just watch something like that, their mind could change so quickly. Yeah, yeah, it does. Like even if they do watch it and then it changes, then they see me on stage and then it changes again. <laughs> <laughs> it flips back and forth. So I don't know. A big question that my cousin Sonny wanted me to ask. What happens when, say you're playing at the Worlds, Ali Pally, what happens between sets when you when they go off when the darts players go off to a little room? Yeah, so obviously they, I think they have to do it for obviously ads and stuff like that. So then you just go back, chill out. Maybe some you need to go to the toilet, uh, get a drink of water, do whatever. And then I think you only get two three minutes back on stage and, and play again. Are you throwing backstage or not? Not backstage. No, I just go back if you if you need to go to the toilet. You no, know, have a drink of water. Just fill in some time because I think they do it for ads and stuff. It's not as glamorous as I thought it was going to be. No, behind the curtain, have a pee. Have a, I will go back on. What, what, what was your idea of glamorous that he goes and throws more darts? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, like you go back there and it's like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the darts factory. Mind you, that's what I said that Winmore was like, wasn't oh, it? I've, he was buzzing over that. He was trying <laughs> they, to describe how they like they engraved my logo into a dart. Have oh, you ever seen have you? You seen the machine when they make the darts? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's good. And I've got a little story to tell the the the, the viewers out there. As we said, I might have said it last week, but there's a machine back in the Winmore factories, and they have all these cameras, um, t like linked up to this board, and you throw thirty six darts. You have twelve visits yeah. at this thing, and it measures. It takes your average, and it measures how close your your average dart is away from the center of the, oh, treble, the treble 20. 20. I did it and I got 5.5 centimeters or something like that and then they they helped me with my throw and then I did it again I think I got like 4.8 or something and there's a list on a whiteboard on the floor of all the players that, that you know what I'm going to say don't you I think so <laughs> You're top of that aren't you I am Do you know your do you remember what you got uh 1.13 Yeah <laughs> What <laughs> yeah, but I actually did that with somebody else's darts as well did you? Yeah, because I didn't take my darts with me, and um, I just grabbed the darts that were in in the board. For fucking hell, I've got a little story for you. I don't know if uh, you know this. You know Steve Beaton, yeah. Yeah. Do you know about him trying to cheat to beat you? Have you heard about this? <laughs> I think Simon said something about <laughs> it, but I I don't know if he was lying or not. Apparently, um, because. He he was like, oh, I need to beat Gezi. So he went up to the board and he was like trying to put the darts in. But because it had to be, I think from what Simon was saying, it had to be thrown with some, quite some force to right. get to get it in for it to compute. So he was like stabbing it in the 20 and then the score came up and he was still further <laughs> away from the one point one. Three. Yeah, the closer you actually get, it's, it's probably is harder. Like, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It's great. It's so good. You're, you're, so you're trying to cheat. It's, it's magic, man. I never thought Steve Beaton would cheat. <laughs> Years ago, 2018 Grand Slam final, and obviously things happened between me and Gary. And then I went and won the tournament. The crowd started booing, even when I was lifting the trophy up, and it hasn't really stopped since. 